afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday, June 30th, last day of the month, and very close to 4th of July as we all begin to celebrate, celebrate our Independence Day. Uh, with that, I call the meeting to order and ask uh, Cliff if he can lead us into a Pledge of Allegiance. Something is wrong with this. And with that, we begin with roll call, Murray. Mr. Cancio. Present. Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Holland. Mr. Martinez. Here. Mr. Meyer. Present. Ms. Fano. Here. Mr. Vasquez. Walters. Ms. Weinberg. Secretary Pago. Here. Treasurer Rodriguez Pina. Here. Vice Chair Ferre. Here. Chair Gutierrez. Here. We have a quorum. Excellent. And we, Ma Madam Chair, uh, I've gotten calls and notes from various board members who are stuck in traffic, overturned truck on 836. Uh, actually, it was eastbound, and the truck ended up on the westbound lane. So they're working okay. their way here. We'll probably hear them on the phone. No one got hurt? Uh, the, the driver of the truck was transported. Oh, well. Well, we pray for him. Um, we go with the approval of the agenda as uh, it is, but I have two items that I'd like to move forward, which is item 11 and item C, and moving it forward right after the treasurer's report. If that's uh, approved by the board. I'll move that so that can be done. Good. Okay, all those in, in favor of the approval of the agenda? Aye. Anyone against can be recorded. Council? Do any members of this board have any conflicts they want to report? Seeing none, we move forward. Onward and forward. Are there any members of the public that would like to come before us and speak? The citizens' comment is now open. <coughs> Please, uh, you have three minutes. State your name and address Yes. for the record. My name is Carlos Garcia, uh, 127th uh, Avenue in, in Kendall, Southwest, and I'm with the group Rollback Tolls. Um, I'm here to, to meet a couple of the new board members that maybe we have not met or have not seen me. Um, I'm part of the grassroots group that uh, advocating for uh, uh, better information from the agency to the public, rollbacktolls.com. And um, no, I'm, I'm glad to see you. there's a lot of uh, attention in the media. Uh, as I knew it would be, um, and uh, I think that uh, uh, I've seen the agency take steps in, in a good direction to provide more clarity, and I want to commend you all for that. Um, I think that uh, in this day and age, we the, de the public demands it, and uh, I hope that MDX can fulfill it and uh, deliver it, and that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you much, Carlos. Are there any other members that would like can I ask a few questions of Mr. Garcia real quick? If possible, mm -hmm. Mr. Garcia. There were recently some increases on the turnpike. Mm -hmm. Have the road, has rollback tolls done anything to confront the legislative body and the governor on those toll increases and demanding the same sort of transparency in that process that was alleged not to That is an here. outstanding question we have. Um, if initially about three years ago when uh, that was being talked about, I actually participated in one of the podcasts um, when the uh, uh, Florida Turnpike Enterprise and FDOT was talking about doing that. Unfortunately, our group caught it on the tail end of that approval. Um, and that was something that, uh, you know, I, I drove by uh, the, the, the turnpike. I had to take it yesterday. I see that it went up from 104 to 106. And that's part of the CPI indexing component that they approved, which our group is adamantly against that this agency approve. Um, and we have, we have addressed that with uh, the Florida Turnpike Enterprise and FDOT. 
what are some of the, the legislators that have kind of combined with you are some of the same legislators that are part of that process that could roll back those tolls right. if they want to roll them back. And I'm just curious as to how you deal with your compadres in one field who attack an MDX, but in the arena where they can actually do something, nobody's doing anything. Well, actually, that's another outstanding point. Our group, um, we have focused more on MDX because you are our local tolling authority. And uh, that's something that uh, our group has saying, you know, we, we like some of the things that MDX is doing. We applaud you in, in, in certain things. We really do. We like the fact that the money is kept local. We like the fact that uh, you know, you're using local vendors wherever possible. That's outstanding stuff. I can't say the same for Florida Turnpike Enterprise or FDOT in certain cases. But the thing is that you know, the fact that I can come here and make a public comment is outstanding. And I think, and that's sorely lacking from FDOT and, and Florida Turnpike Enterprise. But, it, you know, you're more reachable. That, and that's, that's a good thing, you know, and, and that's what we like. I guess it's good and bad in mm -hmm. some regards. Uh, but I guess the concern I have is the same things that we're being lambasted for, mm -hmm. the state of Florida is doing the same thing on the toll roads in Miami, which we get blamed for the turnpike and I-95 sure. and everything. I understand. And those dollars that are collected on that turnpike system, for the most part, those dollars don't remain here in the same fashion or bulk that MDX dollars stay here to enhance the roads that you live on and, mm -hmm. and well, the, the city that you live in or county that you live in and the roads that you drive. Oftentimes, those monies are diverted to other road systems outside of your area. So I would think that as you guys are doing what I call community activism, mm -hmm that you probably step up your position on the turnpike efforts if people are very genuine. Mm -hmm. If it's not genuine, then I think I don't have a problem with us just being the, the whooping child. Right. But I think everything that we've done has tried to be transparent. And when I met with you prior to, and I'm dealing with this because I'm kind of tired of my name being thrown around mm -hmm. and just decide not to say anything. And I think today is a day maybe I ought to just get some of these things off of my chest. But when I met with you prior to the toll increase, I told you then, I don't want a toll increase, but we have infrastructural issues that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And if you guys can give me some other options, I'm all for it. I had that conversation with you over in Midtown, along with uh, Mayor McDougal, and I was very candid with you guys. I don't have a political ax to grind with anyone. I want to see us move forward as a community. And Nobody came forth with a solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. And your Florida legislature does not have the money for the roads, and they haven't come up with any solutions. Your federal government is not putting any money in for solutions. We all recognize we have the problem. Mm -hmm. That we recognize. But nobody wants to pay for it. And then this body that was created to try to capture as much money as we could off of our road system to put back into it gets criticized by the people who aren't doing anything to solve your problem. Mm -hmm. That's when I have a problem, because I don't get paid a nickel for sitting here, and I've taken some, I've taken some heat from you publicly. Yeah. Well, I don't, get paid, I don't get paid either. Uh, I'm a grassroots. I'm a volunteer for, the, for this matter. Now, um, my, my memory is pretty good. I had never recall a meeting with you personally. Um, you met with Mayor McDougal and Mark Goodrich, but you did not meet with Carlos Garcia or Jane Walker. So um, prior to the March 19th, so I'd like was to- it, Was it a rollback tolls representative? No, there, no, I can't say the Mayor McDougal or Mark Goodrich are, are rollback tolls representatives. So the thing is that, uh, you know, our group, you know, if you look at our website, and I encourage you all to look at our website, you would see clearly that we are talking about other things, in particular, SunPass. The post that's on there right now, front and center, is all about SunPass. Okay, so uh, you know again when before the uh, the, the the vote we had a, a petition online, and uh, sadly even though it was posted on the MDX website, one of the board members, board member Guzman, didn't even know that there was a petition. You know I I, I you know I would like for for you all look at the at the website and and, and see what's out there because um, there's information on there. We're not just solely on MDX. 
okay? I mean, that's the reality. If you look at the history, and there's an extensive history, there's 100 videos on our YouTube channel, I encourage you to watch it. There's a lot of stuff about the Turnpike. There's a lot of posts, actually, about the Turnpike and about Diane uh, Scacchetti Gutierrez in, in an inter interview with, we had with her. So I would encourage you all to, to look at it. And the one final thing, I grew up in Alapata. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, from what I understand, are you out from out West Kendall or somewhere in that area? West Kendall, yeah. Okay. Yeah. For years, in fact, I've been driving probably almost 30 years. My family, obviously, even longer than that. We've been paying tolls since then. Mm -hmm. And we had no way around it. If you got on 112 or the 836, you paid because the, the, in, the tolling points were on our side of town for ages. Mm -hmm. And so we paid more than our fair share. And we think it's only right that you spread that cost out over the system. Mm -hmm. And for those people who have written, in my opinion, in Kindle for years at the expense of somebody else building that system out for them, I think it's only right that you have equitable tolling, that you spread those tolling gantries throughout the system to enhance the road system that we all need to move goods and services. Sure. And the people of the Alapata area shouldn't be the only ones paying for it. Well, well, as a kid, I grew up here in Grapeland Heights. My dad worked in Miami Beach. So we paid that toll. I remember as a kid sticking that dime in that quarter in that basket every day. So well, then you helped take the roads out to Kendall and all as well. So again, they should have they should help pay for some of that system out oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we are paying it. We are paying. It. Everybody's contributing, and it's an, it's an equitable system now, keeping with our name, rollback tolls. We, our argument has always been lower the toll or keep it like you did in Kendall instead of raising it 54, the, the per mile rate on the 836, 54%, and, and keeping it you know at the same level and having everyone participating, paying for the road. You're still getting money from everybody, but it's... It's it's a it's a easier sell. It's more affordable to people. The financial impact of this has been a tremendous in this community. I got to tell you, my phone rings every day. I go to Publix. I go to to Shorty's Barbecue, and people are like, "Man, this is killing me." You know, I mean, really. So so I'm glad I was speaking about it, and our group was speaking about it because now it's front and center, and it's where it should be. Thank you very much. So will your group be endorsing the? discount plan that we have in place? I'd like to know more about it. I, I, I really don't know that much about it. I would like to hear what, you know, what's the details. That's why I'm here. Thank you. All right. Any other members of the public that would like to come before us and speak? And with seeing no one, uh, you want to no. ask Carlos a question? Oh, Mr. Garcia, uh, thank you very much to be here today. I have been here in this board for 104 days, and this is the first time anyone has come into the podium to talk about something here. And I hope that in the future, more people are coming and to express their opinion, because we all pay tolls. And I think that's going to be better that more people come here and express their suggestion, their complaint, but you are the first time in 104 days, a meeting that you're here. Congratulations to be here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hearing no more comments, uh, the citizens comment portion is now closed and we move to the approval of the summary of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Move. Is there a second? Second. Anyone opposed? It carries unanimously. Executive Director's report. Madam Chair, board members, I've got a lot to report on. I want to bring you up to date. The first item that I want to report on is that the MPO on June 24th approved the uh, Transportation Improvement Plan for fiscal years 2016 to 2020. Uh, all of the, the, the TIP, the Transportation Improvement Plan, includes all projects MD, MDX is working on or has planned in its upcoming five-year cycle. Uh, I want to be very specific on that and why it's significant. The revenue that we generated with the closing of the system in November afforded us the ability to fund five projects. Of those five projects, 83628, which is the widening and improvements of 836 between 57th Avenue and 17th Avenue, is on schedule, awarded on schedule. 83629, which is the interchange at 87th Avenue for better truck access into the Dural West Cargo area, is planned for award in September of this year. The design of the Gratney going west is in procurement, and there's a planned award in November of this year. 
87410, which is the extension of 874 out to 128th uh, Street and to the airport in Kendall. The notice to proceed has been issued, and the design portion of that is, is well underway. And then the, the only project left of the commitments that we made is 83611, which is the partnership between the Florida DOT, Miami-Dade Expressway Authority, which will reconstruct 836 from 17th Avenue to Biscayne Bay, including the I-395 uh, bridge and, and infrastructure. And, and Mr. Secretary, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the procurement process should begin in September of this year. So my bottom line here is that 70% of the projects that we have in our TIP have been awarded or in the process of being awarded um, with the final piece being the partnership. The second thing I wanted to report on is that back this last month, I had the privilege of attending an ASICAP meeting. ASICAP is the European Association of Toll Road Infrastructure Concessionaires. Uh, the meeting and its members uh, network span over 30,000 miles of roads, motorways, bridges, and tunnels across 21 countries in Europe. The interesting thing and why I report here today is that the theme of the conference was that a multimodal, smart, and safe European transport system and the key role of motorways, highways. I spoke about MDX. I highlighted Florida and the improvements of Florida has made, as well as the uh, IBTTA, International Bridge Tunnel and Turbac Association, and our association with ASICA. A lot of the issues they spoke about in Europe are the same ones we're dealing with now. The infrastructure that we all invest in is not just about moving cars and trucks, it's about moving people and goods. They face the same challenges we are, and they're looking at the same solutions that we have developed here in the U.S., so we exchanged a lot of information. I also participated this last month at the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce Critical Issues Panel titled Funding South Florida's Transportation Priorities. Um, there was not a lot new board members. There was a lot of conversation of where we need to go and how there's not a lot of money in Washington or, for that matter, anywhere else, and that we need to help ourselves here locally. Uh, at the Goals Conference, the Transportation and Infrastructure Session, same of the same, the same types of themes. We need to help ourselves for somebody else to help us as well. So we need to take the initiative locally. So I'll continue to keep you uh, updated on that. Uh, the next one I attended was the newly created MPO Transit Solutions Committee, and I'll leave it to our MPO representative to give you the details. But there was two presentations. Uh, half of one was made. Everything was carried on to the following meeting. This last month, I also met with the editors of the Miami Today and community newspapers. We discussed a variety of issues, everywhere from general MDX misconceptions to our proposed strategic master plan initiative, how we want to address moving people and goods, to the proposed cash dividends, cash back dividends program, which will be on the agenda today. I also took, I also took advantage in the theme that we heard from Carlos before is how can we be more effective in getting the information out and using the, the, those mediums to get it out. They gave us some good ideas. We will consider them and bring them to the board as part of our communications plan. I'm extremely proud that MDX was finally recognized for its hard work, financial results, and operating efficiencies by Fitch rating. I'll leave it to the treasurer, to the chairwoman, to address that further along in the agenda. Finally, we continue to work closely with FDOT staff, Gus, uh, MDT staff, Miami-Dade Transit, and Commissioner Diaz's staff to move forward on the Dolphin Park and Ride. The last two things I want to address, Madam Chair, and these are issues that are important to infrastructure investment. Just recently, the Federal Government Congress, the Senate Environmental and Public Works Committee, passed unanimously with a 20 to 0 vote a, bar a bipartisan transportation bill, proposed transportation bill. It is and I bring this here for your, for, your, for your knowledge. It is called DRIVE, D-R-I-V-E, ACT. The acronym stands for Developing a Reliable and Innovative Vision for the Economy. 
Congress is starting to see that infrastructure investment means economic vitality. And that's what they're moving forward. The reason I also bring this up to you is because during the reports of this Drive Act, Washington Post, and I know that Board Member Meyer brought this to my attention and I wanted to highlight, Washington Post put out a report about a multi-year funding program and how different states are, are dealing with infra investment in infrastructure. And I'm proud to say, and I know the Secretary of Transportation for our district is here, and I'm a former DOT. Florida was ranked number one for the best maintained infrastructure in the United States. And the only reason that Florida can do that and has been able to afford it to do that is because of the numerous transportation authorities and the incredible turnpike that it has in the state of Florida. 90% of all new capacity in the state of Florida has been financed by user pay principals, toll payers, which has allowed the state of Florida to take its federal and state gasoline tax money and other tax money and dedicate it to maintaining and making safer the, the infrastructure. That is an incredible feat. But again, the Drive Act passed, the, passed EPW by a 20 nothing vote. The one thing that the, that, that act fails to, to identify is how it's going to be funded. So with that, I close my remarks and I'll answer any questions, board members. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I'd like to recognize that Member Vasquez is on the phone in attendance and he should be here as soon as uh, traffic eases up. Madam Chair? And Ms. Yes. Ms. Weinberg and so. Ms. Weinberg's also on the phone and I just heard. Great, thank you very much for joining us. Please say shortly. Yes, Member Waters. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you mentioned the project um, 17th Avenue to Biscayne Bay joint F dot, joint MDX project. I assume the delineation point is I-95 where, how, Our, yeah. how does that work? Who is the lead in that? Is that going to be two separate projects? As, as we've done in the past, we have a very good working relationship with District 6 Florida DOT. DOT District 6 will be the lead agency. They'll prepare the, the procurement documents. Just as we did in section five, or the 826, 836, there is an accounting part that how much MDX participates. So it's how really much. an FDOT project okay. that you're helping. But they'll lead it. Okay. They'll let it. We'll coordinate with them, but they'll be the lead agency. Will part of that project deal with the existing left-hand exit to go northbound? Because that is a nightmare. Yes, it will. It's actually part of the project creates a right-hand exit, a right-hand exit to go north on I-95. It allows people who enter the expressway from the hospital district at 12th Avenue not to have to fight four lanes of traffic to get to the left-hand side or cut that traffic off. They can stay on the right and fly over north. Okay. Thank you. And you led that later this year. September is the plan advertisement. Very good. So it's almost here. Any other questions from Mr. Rodriguez? Okay, we move forward with the general counsel's report. Thank you. Uh, Three things to report. On the ETC litigation, we've had no conversations about settling the matter. Um, as a reminder, the trial will start on September 8th, and outside counsel is currently work in preparation. It's going to be very short after our August meeting, the trial will start. Uh, the MCM litigation, we've had some activity since our last board meeting. On May 27th, we went to court on MCM's summary judgment motion. The court denied the motion. Um, and on June 17th, we returned to court. Both MDX and Odebrecht filed motions to dismiss the complaint. After an hour and a half hearing, the judge took the matter under advisement and informed that he would issue a written ruling. As of this date, we still waiting for the written ruling. In addition, we filed our own summary judge motion. We're waiting for that to be set. Um, <clears throat> policy revisions update. There are two remaining policies, the lobbyist and the procurement policy, currently worked on by staff. Policy and Planning Chair Smith Fano has directed staff to research best practices for both policies and set a meeting to discuss the findings at the policy and planning meeting in August 2015. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions to council? Very good. We accept uh, your report. And with that, we move over to our vice chair, who's our representative at the MPL. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
Let me take this opportunity, uh, first of all, to congratulate Marie Schaefer in particular, but I think also our financial advisor, Randy, and her whole team, and our executive director, Javier Rodriguez, for the, for the major breakthrough of Fitch. <clears throat> uh, we live, you know, we live by the sword and we die by the sword. And in this case, the sword happens to be these agencies up in, up in Wall Street that, that uh, have these domically swords over these agencies. <clears throat> and um, I'm sure this has been the baptism for you, Mr. Treasurer, as to how complicated and the, how difficult the questions are and how, how intricate this whole process is. And when a, when a major entity like, uh, like Fitch uh, upgrades us, it's a, it's a major compliment in these difficult times uh, as to one, how efficient MDX is, and two, how we're doing a job. S s secondly, since, um, oh, I know we have an August meeting. Uh, uh, I, I think it's important to point out, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, that uh, the, the IBTTA, which is the entity that uh, our executive director, Javier Rodriguez, uh, heads for this year as the current uh, chair, uh, is having a major, major meeting. And I would hope that Mr. Garcia, Mr. Garcia is still here? No, he's outside. He's, he's uh, with the TV cameras. Um, <laughs> well, well um, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I hope that someone informs him so that uh, I think it would be very good for him to see how agencies from around the country in particular, but around Canada and the rest of the world are coming here and the, and the very high opinion that they have not only of MDX and of Florida in our <clears throat> Department of Transportation, but of our executive director, who is, is the annual chair. And I think um, <clears throat> as I go around um, as a member of the Florida Transportation Commission, all I hear about is what makes MDX number one uh, questions. And the third thing that I want to take the opportunity before I get into my MPO report, Madam Chair, is to, is to say how proud I am of this board and your leadership because the fact is that I want you to show me another board, any board, where it has the kind of presence that MDX has. I've been here for 10 years, and especially in the last five or six or seven years, attendance is always 100%. I mean, we're always here. And I can't tell you how many times I marvel. I know how busy Shelly is. I know how busy Rick is. That Rick doesn't miss a meeting. I mean, that guy is... He's like, he's like, uh, 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 I mean, he, he's unbelievable. He's like a hound dog, and, and so is Shelley. I mean, at all these meetings, uh, and th this is a volunteer job. And, um, and, and, and Bob, I want to tell you how proud I am to see you not only coming to all these meetings in the last couple of months, but how outspoken you are. And I think it's, you're a major voice uh, for, for MDX, and I, and I thank you for, for participation. Now. MPO. Well, I wish MPO were like MDX, but it's not. Uh, the meetings um, are short. The meetings, um, um, people check in. There's 23 members. There's never more than 15 or 16 or 17. Uh, within half an hour of the beginning of the meeting, half of them are gone. Uh, they never last more than an hour. It's difficult to get quorum. Uh, there's all kinds of, uh, of things going on um, to the extent that uh, <clears throat> there's a major division about the reorganization of, M of the MPO. The mayor of Miami Beach was assertive, uh, bypassed the uh, board, and went directly to the same people that, uh, that are interested in MDX in the, in the Tallahassee delegation didn't end run, and uh, because of what happened in the, short, the shortness of the session, nothing occurred. But I want to say that there's absolutely no doubt in my mind 
that uh, this isn't over by a long shot. And, uh, and just like it isn't over for MDX, it's certainly not over for the MPO. And the MPO is, uh, I, I have requested um, as your representative that the MPO reform itself um, and that the reform come from within rather than waiting for the day delegation. Unfortunately, there seems to be this antagonism that goes on between uh, the, the Board of County Commissioners and the day delegation, which is, is really very unfortunate because it's really antagonistic and, uh, and, I, and I'm afraid that that's not going to get us too far. So there are two other things in the PO. One is that there is an executive search for an, a director. Um, I have requested and have not gotten from the MPO a list of who the applicants are. I'm not on the committee, but I'm entitled as a member of the public to get that. I'm waiting. I should have it. As soon as I, I have it, if I see anything that's of uh, interest, I will pass it on to the members of MDX. Um, uh, the committee is going to shortlist it down to 10. And then out of that, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I happen to think that I think this is an urgent matter and that the whole community will be looking at that. But I don't see that there's much progress going on. It's been delayed once, uh, and it'll be coming up sometime in July for a meeting. Uh, even though I'm not a member of the committee, I will be going to, to that meeting. And lastly, um, the Chair Montesim of the MPO has decided to create two committees, one on finance and the other one on transit. He assigned me to the transit committee. And uh, I've gone to the first meeting. Uh, those meetings are going to be uh, uh, one after the other. And uh, uh, Ch Chair um, uh, Montesim assigned uh, Commissioner Moss to chair that committee. And, com and, and Commissioner Moss has asked for a meeting every Wednesday for at least four to five hours. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of work uh, on that committee, and I will keep you informed as to, as to where we're going. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I have to add one more thing. When you congratulated uh, our CFO and her team, um, she has an anniversary now with MDX, 10 years. CFO. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> okay, and with that, we move to the Treasurer's report. Chair, I think um, for those of you who have reviewed the, uh, the documents handed to you, I think you'll find some, uh, some good news uh, as far as the, the amount of uh, transactions that we've had. And I think everything that you'll see on here is consistent with the uh, budget that has prepared and staff had prepared last year. And I think we are uh, right in line and are expecting no surprises. Um, I want to turn it over to Marie and then, uh, but before I do that, I want to also commend staff. Um, the, the rating increase has not come from a subjective uh, opinion. It comes from a professional, diligent, uh, profoundly uh, uh, researched perspective that these institutions uh, analyze before they give us an increase. So I think it is truly a, a direct correlation to the amount of effort that this organization and this professional staff uh, has put together in order to get that increase. I sat in on a call this past week where, with another rating agency, and we were very aggressive in letting them know that our expectations is to uh, increase their rating of us as well. And I want to commend Marie. Marie. She was uh, very assertive in saying that, uh, uh, given all the criteria and how we're performing, that we should, uh, we're deserving of a increase from this rating, uh, additional rating organization. So. Let's hope and keep our fingers crossed, and we should be hearing in the next 30-plus uh, days we may get another increase. But I don't want to create that expectation. I'm just telling you that we were assertive and we were uh, communicative in, in letting them know that uh, we deserve the increase. So, Marie, would you please go over some of the highlights of the budget? Certainly. Um, the Treasury report that's before you is for the 11-month period of fiscal year 15. Um, overall revenue um, was posted $164.2 million, is about 1.8 below the forecast. 
um, and as I indicated in previous meetings, um, our traffic transactions don't necessarily follow the revenue recognition. There's a timing and a delay process that image review goes through. Um, so from a, from a perspective of revenue, um, revenue is pretty much on target where, where we had forecasted. Um, to give you a perspective, uh, for the 11-month period, we had forecasted 321 million transactions for the 11-month period. Our actuals are actually 329 million. So that means that um, the system outperformed by almost 8 million um, transactions that was forecasted. So people are using the expressway system. For over what period of time is that? That is for the 11 month period. That is for the, the 329 11 million. 329 million transactions um, from July 1st to, to May 31st. And what we forecasted was 321. So that's about 8 million more than what we had by, forecasted. By, by we, you mean HDM Smith? Correct. There are traffic consultants. They go through Thank a very you. lengthy process to determine what the traffic flows are. Um, so what I want to indicate, and actually that was an indication from the Fitch rating, is that the system has outperformed the projections and what they had um, anticipated as well. On the expense side, um, there's really no surprises on the expense side. Um, expenses for the 11-month period was $43.6 million, as opposed to the budget of 47.1. So we're below the budget by $3.5 million, or 7%. Um, we think that by the end of the year, through June and year-end adjustments, we'll be somewhere around 4.5%. Our interest expense is $48.5 million um, compared to the budget of 54. dollars um, That's a savings of $5.6 million. Um, that's primarily due to the fact that we did the refunding and the refinancing in September of 2014. So overall, the net revenues for the system was $72 million. Um, that's about 11% um, above what we had forecasted. Excellent. Any questions from regarding uh, Marie's report and the treasurer? A comment, if I may? Yeah. I would like to share the congratulate Marie and the staff for the upgrade as well. Marie, I am curious, how does our rating compare to other authorities nationally? Are we at the upper echelon or are we about similar with everyone else? If you know that. You know, it, it's, it's sort of all over the map. I mean, there's different okay. criteria bear, bear upon a, a rural system, bear, 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 depending upon a mature system. So it really does, you know, range in the gamut. I will tell you that where we are as an A credit, we think that we should be somewhere on, a, you know, a higher A credit. And I think we'll get there, as Mr. Rodriguez Pena indicated. We are starting to meet with the other two rating agencies. Um, we're showing them our financial performance. We're showing our governance, our policies. And all of it's pretty favorable responses back from them. So we hope to have some good news in the up upcoming months. Congratulate you and Treasurer Rodriguez Pena for the hard work you're putting in here in, in this aspect. Because I think, I think there's a lack of appreciation on how important this is for our clients in the sense that every time our rating system improves, that improves our, our qualifications for bond and for interest rates. Is that, my, is that correct, Marie? That is correct. Yeah. So I think that is something that we should really, and again, as always, we're keeping our dollars here, and at the same time, we're trying to save as many dollars as we can for our clients as well. Congratulations. And, and I'll add, Madam Chair, that we had Mr. Rodriguez is on the phone. Every, we had all hands on deck, and they were very complimentary of a presentation. Again, so I think um, we're really making a strong push. And Who's on the phone? We, well, when we were on the phone, when we did a presentation with one of the bond rating companies this past week, we had uh, an extensive presentation, and they were, they were commenting on how professionally prepared it was. And again, to me, the highlight of the conversation is that we were not shy. We were saying, you know, we are a professional organization. We've outperformed, and we deserve. And I think, and again, I, I commend uh, Marie and Javier for taking that initiative. And, and Madam Chair, if I may, and Mr. Treasurer, I, I got to commend the, M the MDX Board of Directors. And it's not just this Board of Directors. You know, this, it's like, it's like your personal credit. It's easy to build up personal credit. It's really, really hard to restore your credit if you had a, a credit hit, okay? The Expressway Authority, before I got here, took a hit over a, an issue of a local sales tax versus tolls. It has taken us eight years, the eight years that I've been here, and I know my predecessor for a year was doing everything possible. It's taken us eight years and a lot of policy, a lot of dedication, a lot of forward thinking to put us in this position today. So it's not just let's congratulate us. It's, it's this board and its policies for a long period of time sticking to it because ultimately 
we want to borrow at the cheapest rate. We don't want to spend more on interest than we need to, and that's, I think, the, the, the issue. And regardless of the rating, when we sold the bonds back in last year, we sold them as a higher rated agency than what these agencies actually uh, uh, pers uh, prescribe to us. So they all recognize, the investment community recognizes the principles. Madam Chair, if I may. Absolutely. And, and furthermore, um, Marie, we will oversubscribe, what, six of, 16 times? Actually, was 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 actually much higher than that. The last deal that we did in refunding was where we we're like almost 30, 35 percent um, oversubscribed. And and what ends up happening when we yeah. oversubscribed is we lowered the yeah. interest rate, and yeah. we still had you know institutional buyers that were willing yeah. to, to take our bonds. So, so 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 in other words, what what I want to share with with the uh, with the board here is the people who who have the the strictest judgment and the harshest people to work with, which are the bond rating agencies, when they see these things occur and they upgrade us, it's, it's really a result, and Servando is here, it goes back to Servando. Servando, thank you for your hard work. It's the eight years of Javier Rodriguez, the leadership that we've had over these years. Uh, there are not many agencies in the United States that are as highly regarded and is run as efficiently as MDX is. And I think this is an important thing. And there's one, one, one last thing that I wanted to put on the record. I made, I, I, I divided 329 by 11. That's a million people a day. Yes, it is. In other words, we're dealing with one million, I repeat, one million human beings. These are transactions on MDX. So it, 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 this is, you know, we're not talking about chicken feed. This is a big, big operation. And I, and I think I, my, my, my congratulations to all that have been involved. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Member Vaca, you're recognized. Good afternoon, and thank you. Um, I'd like to just coattail real quickly on the executive director's comments about this board and former board members. And in particular, in particular I, I think we would be remiss if w some of the kudos that are being given uh, are also not, uh, that, we, that we should recognize Carlos Fernandez Guzman, who was our last treasurer, um, just like Rick Rodriguez Pina has done a great job in picking up right where he left off. I know how excited Carlos was when he found out about our upgrade, and I would be remiss if we didn't recognize the great work he did as our treasurer while he was here. Well, it takes a village to get to where we are. It's not just one individual. It's a collective effort of all, and that's why we are where we are today. So with that, uh, any other questions or comment to the treasurer or our CFO? Okay, seeing none, we move forward with the agenda. And I take it from here. You know, uh, we are concluding our fiscal year, and I conclude my term as your chairperson. And I wanna take a moment to revisit what we've been able to accomplish together in this short one year, okay? Because there's a lot of work that has been done and it's for the greater good of this community as we work together. Um, in a couple of months, you let a great project that will complete our last procurement for our construction program, our five-year construction program. That's wonderful. We look forward for the Secretary of FDOT and our governor to join us uh, in September when you do that for the groundbreaking. Uh, in December of this last year, we did something very important and unique for our freight industry. We are a freight-friendly expressway. We welcome the facility, we worked with the industry, and we developed a program that only charges for the third axle. That means that our frequency discount policy was capped for tolls, for truckers, utilizing the Sun Pass, and they only pay for three axles, meaning all cargo containers and the freight contained inside these containers ride for free on the expressway. The effort of what we did together is we took out those trucks and we put them on our expressways so those roads can be freed from the truckers. We also initiated funding of safety enhancements on A36. We did it rather quickly. 
with wrong-way signage and new road reflectors. Congratulations to staff for making this possible and doing so quickly. In March of this year, we declared a toll freeze. And not only did we do that on the entire MDX system, but we also went back into our policy and we clearly provided a definition for the CPI and the steps for any future CPI increase. We reaffirm our transparent new policy for any new expressway construction or toll movement, meaning it needs to be self-sustaining and not add a new toll onto the current system as we know it today. Okay. Some very important issues that also occurred during this year. We stood strong against the illegal elimination of our board. Actually, the unconstitutional elimination of certain board members just because of the industry that they're in. Also, the illegal grab of 10% of our toll dollars towards transit or any other use, thanks to the support of the Secretary, Boxall, and the Speaker, and the leadership in the House of Representatives. When we revisit what we've done and what we have accomplished, we always need to remember that to get here, it took a lot. It took part and effort of all of us and staff and also the village outside from us that see the good work that is being done, okay? Just recently, we, we um, met with the Think Big Committee and very important issues came out of the Think Big and items. We define new improvements for customer service, for toll collections. We just heard the importance and how many transactions we're actually capturing on a daily basis. Special system to improve service waiting period. Very vital to improve our customer service. An online chat to enhance the use of the website. And then we also provided a new, new item that we're giving our executive director to go back to Miami-Dade County and negotiate with the leaders. And I ask you, please, go back to Commissioner Pepe Diaz, who's in charge of that very important committee that handles all issues relating to transportation, especially the airport, to talk about this new initiative, how we will be able to fund a new rail system going east and west with additional transportation alternatives to move people without our toll dollars, meaning through the MIC enterprise. Very important. Uh, we also approved an extensive public information campaign that will inform the public of what and where and what is MDX doing with its toll dollars. Very important because we continue our effort of being transparent. We also approved the construction of the Dolphin Park and Ride Facility at Northwest 122nd Avenue and SR 836. Another effort to come in and do something to get people out of their cars. And now we come to the very important item today that also came out of the Think Big. We challenged staff to think outside the box. They came through, the professionals came through. We made a commitment to this community when not all of us, not unanimously, but the tolls were approved and the system was closed. There is a construction program that needs to be funded. It is being funded. Tolls are being collected. People are writing the system and the numbers are showing that more people are writing the system and we come to the cash back dividend program. Today's agenda, item C, which now has been moved forward, is a commitment and reaffirmation of the tolls that are collected that are not needed to fund the current construction program, that are not needed for the maintenance and operations, that are not needed for the coverage ratio by our policy, will be equally refunded to our toll customers. This is a very important move, and it shows the commitment that we have as a board to this community, to the SunPass customers that are in good standing, that will be registered, because we will open registration again. We made a commitment. We now come back and say, yes, the tolls were raised. We hear you. But if we are efficient, you will be saving. So. 
any toll dollars left on the table will be refunded to the toll customers. It will go rightfully back to who it belongs to. So I ask you, when you take a look at item C, you consider it, and please, let's stand together one more time voting for our community. This item will be going back to policy and also budget and finance, because I want to make sure that it has the test of time so whenever, if ever, it is challenged, it can endure that test and it can never be removed that from this current system that we have today, any leftover toll dollars goes back to its rightful owner, which is our customers. Thank you. And with that, I give it to council to open up the item C for a vote. No? No, we, no, done we that. did all that. We all did that already. We are on to item C, action item. Right, we we, we yes. modified the agenda. That would be the cashback dividend program endorsed at the June 18, 2015 Think Big Committee meeting. Madam Chair. Chair. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. I was going to say, Madam Chair. I want him to read it into the record so then I can call for a motion. I was going to say, before he does that, what I would like this to, for this, for you to be able to yourself move it in because this was one of your brainchild and normally a board member would do it and under Robert's rules that is the tradition but I would ask that for this particular item okay. you okay. move it. So that problem. Jo if you can please read it into the record and I'll turn the gallon. Uh, before we move it into the record I uh, we had three board members show up because of traffic delays and I just want to ask Ms. Weinberg, Mr. Vasquez or Mr. Gonzalez do you have any um, any conflicts you want to report? Okay, we move forward. Item C, cashback dividend program, endorsed at the June 18, 2015 uh, Think Big Committee meeting. Is that it? No. So, uh, read the entire item. Read the entire item. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I may, um, the cashback toll dividend program um, was born out of the uh, Think Big subcommittee and it was endorsed and the action was moved um, by the committee um, to the governing board. Um, essentially, the program is based upon MDX achieving certain financial projections and, and obligations, and once those are exceeded, the governing board would be in a position to declare a cashback toll dividend, um, and the process is not yet refined. We'd go to budget and finance. They would declare the amount as well as the percentage um, back to the commuters. Um, the commuters that would qualify for the program would be SunPass customers only who are in good standing, um, two-axle vehicles. As you indicated earlier, we already have a multi-axle discount program, so this program would not apply um, to those individuals. Um, the program would still put in place that the bondholders would be in senior lien position. We would be in a position to meet all our financial obligations and reserves. Um, the amount is variable year to year based upon the financial performance of it. Um, we did have a quick presentation. I don't know if you wanted me to read some of the questions um, to just clarify the program. Yep. Do so. Well, Marie walks up there. I had uh, extensive conversations with Marie and I, and I think this is a great program, Madam Chair, and I know that uh, staff has done a diligent job in putting this and very thoughtful, and uh, I think your presentation will really clearly elaborate what the objectives and goals of this project is. Yeah, uh, the mic is not working. I, I asked if the governing board would like me to go through the full presentation or just to go through some of the questions. If, I, I would like to see the whole presentation. Go. So as the chair had indicated, the cash pack toll dividend program came out of a subcommittee called the Think Big Subcommittee. And we were challenged by the chairwoman, Mrs. Gutierrez, to come up with some ideas that would expand upon or enhance MDX's mission. And it could be any idea from finance, from procurement, legal, or customer service. So the thought that we had behind this program is how MDX actually manages its finances. 
Um, from an accounting perspective, we are set up as an enterprise fund, a proprietary fund, and what that means is those are business type activities, very similar to water and sewer, to the airport, toll roads, concessions, things of that nature. It's, it's paid through the use of a user fee. Um, the difference is, is that we have a public purpose and a fiduciary responsibility to the public. So even though we operate and finance activities similar to a private entity, we still have a public purpose and a fiduciary responsibility relationship with our, our, our commuters. We issue debt, obviously, to ex expand upon the expressway system, no different than a private organization that would have to borrow debt to expand upon their business. We are solely responsible for repaying that debt and meeting our obligations. Um, enterprise funds usually, and as MDX's case, we don't receive any sales tax, we don't receive any, any federal grant programs, so the only source of revenue that we have is the user fee, which is our toll dollars. So the thought behind this program is that we looked at our bondholders, we spent a lot of time talking about our commitments to our bondholders, um, and they loan us the money essentially to build the projects, to fund the projects. Our toll payers actually pay the toll, they pay the user fee in order for us to repay that debt. But when you look at the commitments, they're very similar. They're, they're one and the same, whether you're a bondholder or whether you are a commuter. Um, we have a responsibility to run the organization efficiently. We have the responsibility to spend the dollars where we said we were going to spend the dollars into the projects that we committed to. We have a responsibility to be accountable and transparent, whether you're a commuter or whether you're a bondholder. We have a responsibility to take those bond dollars and deliver the projects that we said that we, we borrowed the money for. And we have the same responsibility to toll payers as to why we're charging them a toll. So when you really look at the commitments, they're one and the same. The bondholders get a financial direct return on their investment, which is called interest. They get interest on their money. Our users don't necessarily get a direct financial interest, but they still get a benefit from the improved mobility, you know, safety, travel time savings, and it's an improvement of quality of life. So the thought behind the program was that we would turn our customers and our commuters into, into similar to our investors. So now they have a financial stake in the expressway system. The board of directors would have the ability to declare dividends, which is going to be tied to MDX's financial performance and our governance. A lot of the financial results that occur is based upon governance, based upon policies, based upon decisions the governing board makes. So it's not just about the financial uh, results, it's about the decision making this governing board makes um, every single day and at every single governing board meeting. The cashback dividend program, it also demonstrates MDX's ability to you know, show stable financial results and good governance. We've never been afraid to demonstrate that, we have demonstrated that, and we continue to do so. The cashback toll dividends will be paid from net revenues, which is after we paid all our obligations um, through the authority account. As they indicated, bondholders would remain in senior lien and all required obligations are met first. So this is an illustration, this is just an illustration, um, just to show you an example, that if our revenue is 175 on any given year and expenses are 47 million, our net revenue is 128 million. The bondholders need to be paid back by $67 million. In our financing plan, we projected that we should come up with a coverage of 185. Well, the actual results that were achieved was 191. So what this illustration shows is the governing board would be able to, to declare a dividend. In this case, I showed an example of $3 million. I wanted to take a step back and to kind of explain why the senior coverage of the 185 was so important to achieve. It is about credit rating. It is about the cost of borrowing and funding our capital projects, similar to when you borrow to, to finance your, your mortgage on your house. What is the interest rate you're going you're to get? The lower the interest rate, the lower the cost. Um, we need to be able to cash fund our projects. We have a portion of our capital program, just like a down payment on a house, that we're basically saying we're not going to mortgage the whole thing. We are going to cash fund a portion of the capital projects. And that's how the financing plan was built. Um, we also have a responsibility to system preservation and make sure that the expressway system is maintained in, in excellent condition. Um, that was one of the comments that the Fitch rating agencies brought out in the report, that um, they were very pleased to see that we received an excellent condition on, on our expressway system. The senior coverage ratio is important also to be able to make our principal and interest payments year over year. And it's also important to make sure that we fund up our reserves. So that's why the target of, of getting to our coverage ratio is so important. This is an example on how we would go about calculating the dividends to 
our commuters. If we declared a $3 million dividend, we had 75,000 people who registered for the program, and I broke it up based upon annual tolls. You have 20,000 uh, commuters in the $400 range on an annual basis. We have 25,000 and 275 and, and 30,000 um, who spent $200 on an annual basis. Their daily toll is anywhere from 145 to 73 cents. If the governing board said, well, we're going to declare 20% dividends, 20% of $400 is $80 back. So that individual's daily toll just went down from 145 to 116. So what the program does in effect, it lowers the toll rates. Um, we gave an example in the bottom half of the screen that if 50,000 people registered, obviously we'd be able to declare a higher dividend amount, such as 25%. And again, that lowers an individual's overall da daily toll rate even further. So what does it really do? The commuters now, they pay their toll, they get the benefit of you know, an expressway system that's safe, that's reliable, um, that's enhanced mobility, but now they do have a return on investment, which is called the cash back dividend. They will get their portion of their tolls back. So they are placed in the same position, in a sense, from, from the bondholders that they have a financial stake in the system. Some of the criteria that we are recommending is obviously the program um, would be in a position to declare a dividend once MDX exceeds its financial projection or and its senior debt coverage on an annual basis. Customers must register on an annual basis. They must be a SunPass customer in good standing, and they must have paid $100 in toll per fiscal year on MDX's um, expressway and any of the five roadways. This is only for a two-axle vehicle, and the annual dividend would be declared by the Budget and Finance Committee um, after we do our year-end close and cash would be paid out um, in mid-December. Before we presented this to the subcommittee, we went through a due diligence process. Um, we did speak to our financial advisor for Southwest, and we asked them to, to talk to the rating agencies as a blind client, not really telling us what, you know, telling them what client was, and, you know, kind of just kind of gauging where they felt this would have an impact to our credit rating, if all. And the response we got was they were comfortable with the program because we are going to be in a position to meet our obligations to our senior bondholders, first and foremost, our reserves, and all the financial commitments would, would be funded up first. Um, so they actually liked the program. Um, the financial impact would be determined on a year-to-year -year basis based upon financial performance. Um, we went to legal, and we asked legal, our bond counsel, tax counsel, as well as our general counsel, um, for concurrence on this program. Our bond counsel um, response was that this fit into our trust and denture requirements, and there was no issue from a trust and denture perspective. Our tax counsel didn't feel that there were any significant issues. Um, we still have to go through some administrative procedural things with tax counsel, but we don't think that there's going to be any issues there. Um, we talked to general counsel whether or not the terms and conditions of the program of the Advantage program would be able to roll over into this program, and again, they were comfortable that the language allowed us to do so. Um, we spoke to the IT department to make sure that what we built on the Advantage program that we can modify to make sure that this program can be implemented in a timely fashion, and IT concurred that they, they felt that this was, they could support it. We went to the Public Communications Department. We asked Public Communications whether or not they had enough time and they understood the program and, and the program could be communicated to the public in a timely fashion. And we did get um, an agreement from the Public Communications area that this was a program that they could get out to the, the public as soon as possible. Um, I have several questions, and this is really just a summary of the program itself. What is the program? What the program is, is MDX will declare a cashback toll dividend from net revenues earned in the, each of the fiscal years for eligible customers. The amount of the cashback toll dividend will be determined by the Budget and Finance Commission Committee by October, which is the first half of the subsequent fiscal year, based upon a variety of business and economic factors. Why does MDX offer a cashback toll dividend? The cashback toll dividends are a component of MDX's customer value initiative and one of our unique benefits in investing in mobility in our community. Cashback toll dividends are a way to promote ongoing equitable tolling among the expressway system's loyal customers. What is the effect on toll rates? The effect of the cashback toll dividend lowers the commuter's customer's toll rate. Why not just lower the toll rate instead of having a cashback dividend program? The current toll rates are based upon achieving certain financial objectives to repay the debt and to continue the much needed capital projects, specifically on 836. Since the financial results are based upon forecast and not actual results, the current toll rates are needed. However, 
Should the revenue outperform the forecast, expenses are lower than expected because efficiencies and or construction costs are lower than expected, then MDX will be in a position to declare a cashback toll dividends to our commuters. How will the cashback toll dividend be, be calculated? The cashback toll dividend is based upon MDX exceeding its financial projections and senior coverage ratios. The board would declare a cashback toll dividend amount and distribution percentages. Um, the net revenues calculation will be based upon general accepted accounting principles and our trust indenture coverage calculations. Why doesn't MDX distribute all of its net revenues? MDX must first comply with all of its debt obligations, its reserve requirements, as well as continue to fund the capital necessary for future growth of the system and service our, our customers. Will MDX distribute a cashback dividend every year? MDX board would like to distribute a cashback toll dividend every year that financial projections and senior coverage ratios are exceeded. The exact cash amount, however, will be determined at the end of each of the fiscal years and we based upon, again, various business and economic factors. Are customers still eligible to register for the program? Open enrollment ended on April 30th of 2015. However, since this is a modification of the Advantage program, MDX will reopen the registration for fiscal year 15 and 16 on July 13th through August 14th. Customers who have already registered for the Advantage program will enroll roll into the cashback toll dividend program for both of the fiscal years. When will the, the cashback toll dividend checks be distributed? Customers will receive an email notification several weeks before checks are mailed out. The cashback toll dividend checks are expected to be mailed out in mid-December. With that, we'd be more than happy to entertain questions, Madam Chair. Very good. With that, we're going to go for a motion. Mm -hmm. Take the chair at this point, and um, I'm the chair is now open for a motion. Motion to approve. Um, chair Gutierrez makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Um, Ms. Uh, Smith, final seconds. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Okay. I'd like. To, I don't know if Mr. Garcia has had enough information on this program, but I want to be proactive and bring you in, as opposed to criticizing later, do you have any information you want to put on here, any concerns that you have about this program? And let's see if we can address those now. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Holland. Usually, usually, because of our policy, it, it you know, the public comment portion is closed. And our policy doesn't uh, present itself for us to engage in a back and forth conversation on a particular policy that its own volunteers are voting on. So I will tell you, from my point of view, even though I am the maker of this, I will be a stickler for us to maintain and withhold our public policy because we are a body of policy. So I'm sorry. I'll respect, Not engaged I'll in that conversation. Hey, any other comments or questions? I do have, I do have one. Martinez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rice Chair. My question is to Marie and to staff. You are discussing a 30-day reopening of the, um, the Advantage Program, which I think is excellent. My question is, is, would it be too difficult to open it for, say, instead of 30 days for 45 days so that it could remain open to our next meeting, which would be on the, on the 25th? Is, there, is that an issue for us? Can you give me an idea why just the 30 days, if we can do it longer? My, just. I'm curious, Marie. I think the longest we could do it is to the end of August. We do need to close the books, okay. and obviously the auditors will be here in September. Mm -hmm. So if I may, you may. Uh, friendly a friendly amendment to move the, the amount of the uh, open, enrollment. open enrollment to the end of August. Is staff accepted? Is that okay with staff? Yes. And will the maker of the motion accept my friendly amendment? Absolutely. Excellent. And will the seconder, and will the seconder accept it? Further discussion on this. Thank you. Are there any uh, statements to be made at this time? If not, um, ready to vote. So when vote. Would it would be open? I know you said till August 30th. Till right? August the 30th. August 30th. Said. And when would it be open? Immediately? July 16th. Okay. 13th. 13th. Uh, is there further discussion? Are we ready to vote? I do have a question. Um, Ms. Fallon indicated to me. Mr. Martinez. Mr. Um, Council, do we need to vote on the amendment or is it just added to it? Does the whole board need to vote on the amendment to make it part of it? Yes. And Mr. Vice Chair. Oh, a friendly sure. amendment that is accepted by the maker of the motion and the seconder of the motion has to be voted on separately. Yes, sir. Right. On the 
amendment as made. Um, are we ready to vote on that? Does everybody know what we're voting on? All, right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So that, par that, that carries unanimously. Now, as amended on the main motion made by Chairman Gutierrez and seconded by Ms. Smith Fano, are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, Madam Chair, that you, you have the chair again. Thank you so Thank much, you. Vice Chair. Uh, congratulations, actually, to this board. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for being part of this initiative. This is important. If there is any money left on the table, that it goes back to our customers. Thank you. With that, we move on. Consent agenda item. Yes, Madam Chair, we have two travel uh, appro uh, approvals. It's a uh, July 22nd through 24th. Uh, MDX board members and executive director Rodriguez to attend the 2015 Transportation Summit, FBT slash Team Florida, dash FTC Transportation Authority Monitoring and Oversight Meeting, July 23rd at 8.30 a.m. And the second one would be August 27th to September 2nd, 2015, to attend the IBTT, IBTTA Board of Governors meetings, August 27th through the 29th, and the IBTTA 83rd Annual Meeting and Exhibition, August 30th to September 2nd, 2015. And to approve. Move. Is there a second? The item is now open for discussion. Anyone would like to add anything to this? Okay, the question is called. Anyone against? The motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, regular consent agenda. We move to the regular agenda, item A, MDX procurement contract number ITB 15-03, MDX work program 87404.060, construction services for roadway improvements for Southwest 104th Street, Killian Parkway, from east of Southwest 112th Avenue to west of 107th Court, and your engineer's estimate, $951,782.37, endorsed by the Operations Committee on June 18, 2015. Approval for staff to enter into negotiations with the sole responsive bidder, Halley Engineering Contractors, Inc., to reduce the submitted bid amount to an amount equal to or less than the engineer's estimate, and if successful, enter into the contract. Okay. Is there a motion on this item? I just want to make a quick comment on that. Is there a timeline for that negotiation? In other words, if we don't do it within a certain time frame, is there a standard, say, you know, we, we try to enter these negotiations 30 days, 45 days, or is that uh, something that's not typically done? We can establish a timeline for that. We don't have to. I'm just curious, okay, Madam Chair? I, I think we to. should establish a timeline. I'm just, I just don't want to be held hostage, I guess, really my point. You know, negotiations could take on longer than what they should, and we feel that we're at a disadvantage. Let's but give I, it a I don't timeline. know if Let's give it a timeline, timeline to meet the deadline in order to start construction during the summer. Right, that's exactly. So there, we would, that would be our timeline, basically. Right. Okay. Then, then Madam I have Chair, this question and staff. Madam Chair, the, uh, I was the chair of the operation. The issue on this is that it has to be done during the summer because it affects the Florida International University. So there's a inherent timeline already here. Um, and I'd like to move the item, and I have no objection to any kind of time amendment to the item. About a week or two? I'll leave it to discretion of staff. I just want okay, to make sure fine. that we're cognizant. In this case, there's a built-in uh, timeline. Let's put, uh, let's put five working days. No objection to that amendment to the... Uh, I, would, I have no objection to that amendment. Okay, is there a second on that one? All right. Any other comments or questions uh, to staff on this item? There are, um, Madam Chair, this was thoroughly vetted in operations, and there was an excellent uh, participation of board members that were not on the committee as well. So I feel very comfortable recommending this item to go forward. Very good. Hearing that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? The motion carries. As amended. As amended. Very good. Item B. Item B, MDX work program A7410, State Road 874 ramp connector to Southwest 128th Street, endorsed by the Operations Committee on June 18, 2015. Approval of eminent domain parcel resolution number 15-17. All right. Is there a motion? Is there a second on this item? Would staff like to add something? Because this was... Thoroughly discussed in operations. 
Madam Chair, this continues the right of way acquisition program for 87410. These are, this is a resolution for four specific parcels through neg negotiated conveyance. And if we can't get it negotiated, we would move into eminent domain on those. Very good. Any questions? Hearing none, there is a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. Thank you. We move forward. Okay. We'll move to item D, approval of revision to MDX bylaws. And that would, I'll, uh, I'll take this. On March 10th, we had a uh, workshop where all the policies were reviewed except for the procurement policy. Two, uh, there was two matters that um, directed staff to handle and amend the bylaws. One was to include information on how to uh, conduct a shade meeting, which was uh, included in the bylaws. And second was to, um, to, to change the bylaws to reflect the, uh, the executive director's employment contract. Both, uh, both those things were added to the bylaws that are attached. Very good. Is there a motion on this item? I'll move them. Is there a second? second. Has this been uh, reviewed by everyone? Yep. Okay. Yes. We all know that there's still two portions of the revisit of all our policies that are pending. One, the procurement, and the other one, the lobbyist. So I would highly recommend that uh, when we continue after the summer break, that the policy chair convenes a, a meeting gets together and starts uh, looking at those pieces together. Want to make sure that they're tight and firm and, um, and we conform with uh, policies. Is there, again, I ask, any comments on this item? No? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Very good. It carries. And now we move to the election portion of Election authority. Of authority officers. And first, before you op we open that item, I want to say the following. First, I have to say thank you. Thank you so much for the trust that you put in me when you voted for me. Thank you so much, staff, for working with me and making everything possible. We went through a lot of business rules, and this is how we got here today. I'm going to tell you this. I thank you. I appreciate it. We worked fast and hard, and here we are today. I am not seeking re-election. I have to take a break from the endless hours that we do spend with MDX because it's not just coming to a committee meeting. It's not just coming to a board. To get to where we got and to be able to do all this, it required a lot of hours. And those hours I take away from my business. And my business is now thirsty and saying, hello, Maritza, where are you? And I need to say, hello, I'm here for you. I will continue to be here, and I will go back to my seat. And believe me, I don't need a title to speak my piece. <laughs> so with that, I, give, I turn it over to you. Do you mind if I use the podium? Uh, Madam Chair, before, before you, you do that, no, no, stay there, Carlos. Mine, mine's very, very short. Um, I just want to, on behalf of all of us, uh, thank you for your tireless efforts, for your integrity, for your dedication to, uh, to getting the job done, for getting the job done, for being fair, uh, for being open, uh, for being flexible. And uh, those are not easy things for someone with your character <laughs> to do, but uh, you have. You've done it. And, uh, you were chair for three years before that. This is your fourth year. Um, and many, many of the things that we have are thanks to your persistence, to your guidance, to your vision. And I just want to say that I would like for all of us to give you a standing hand at this time. Thank you, Madam Chair. I anticipated him. I'm the standing ovation. That's why I came up here. Uh, <laughs> uh, as we open this portion of the meeting to elect the governing board of MDX, if I may exercise a point of personal privilege, I would like to thank all the members of the board for the opportunity and the honor of serving as your general counsel for the last seven months 
It has been a pleasure serving you and the MDX staff. Um, since we have three new board members, I just want to go over the procedures that will follow, and I will be brief. I'll open the floor to nom the first part is the nominations. I'll open the floor for nominations for each board office, beginning with the office of chair. You may nominate yourself, or you may nominate someone else. There must be a second to the nomination. Members need not be present, which is not the case today. Everybody's here, which is reflective of this board. Uh, I call part two, the candidate statement and questions. Any, uh, any nominee uh, can make a statement and board members will be allowed to ask them questions. There's also gonna be a discussion period where uh, the board can discuss about the nominees. Voting. Voting will be by written ballot that have been provided in your folders and they're color coded. Um, I had a section in there about anybody participating telephonically, but everybody's here. Uh, if on the first ballot no nominee receives the majority of votes, the member receiving the fewest number of votes will be dropped from the balloting and a second uh, round of ballots will be uh, commenced. If there's only one nominee for the position, voting can be, voting can be completed by acclamation. Uh, before I open the floor for nominations of the chair, are there any questions on the process I just explained? Seeing no questions, the floor is open for nomination of the Office of Chair of the Governing Board of the Authority. Yeah. I'd like to take a moment and like to nominate uh, a board member that has been with us and has demonstrated the leadership skills to lead the board with courage and wisdom. And he's a lawyer and former prosecutor and a great father of three, <laughs> Louis Martinez. I'd like to second that motion. Okay. So the nom <laughs> okay, we'll have a new category of thirds. Uh, okay. Are there any further nominations for the office chair? There being no further nominations, I declare the nominations of chair closed. Can I get a motion for acclamation? Okay, it's anonymous. Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. to Board Member Martinez. Poor Louis. <laughs> uh, I guess I get to say something now? <laughs> you, you could say. I would like to say that I have had the opportunity to be on many boards in my career from bar boards and others, and I have never met a more impressive board than this one. I'm talking about the members today, and I'm talking about the members that I have worked with over the last eight years. To follow in the footsteps of Maritza and Maurice is a daunting task for anyone. And I hope I'm up to the challenge, and I have no doubt that I will continue to need the guidance and the support that I receive here. The one thing I have never, ever, I've always enjoyed about this board is even when we don't agree, we listen to each other, we respect each other, we argue our positions and we understand that we are here. And I think this is very important that people forget. We are all clients as well. We don't get a free golden sun pass when we join this board. As Ms. Gutierrez says, we take time out of our schedules from our children, from our work, and we pay the same tolls that we pay. And that is something that I take great pride in what we do here. And I thank you all for the opportunity. And I look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you. It's July 1st, Louis. Start. All okay. Right. <laughs> the floor is now open for nominations for the Office of Vice Chair of the Authority's Governing Board. I'd like to take a moment and nominate for Vice Chair of this position. I believe that the executive team always needs to have a woman. Whether it's chair or vice chair, it needs to have that delicate balance and someone with wisdom and the educational skills to understand that it is a delicate balance. I'd like to nominate Shelly Fano for vice chair. And since Shelly has been sitting next to me this whole time, I would like to second that nomination. <laughs> And third. Third over here, too. <laughs> We're creating a new bylaw with the thirds. <clears throat> Are there any further nominations for the Office of Vice Chair? Uh, 
There being no further nominations, I declare the nominations for vice chairs closed. Can I get a motion uh, or acclamation? Okay, congratulations. Humbled. Would you like to say anything? Humbled. Okay. And I thank everybody and I echo the words with Louis and I'm honored to be on this board. And it is a wonderful investment of my volunteerism and our volunteerism. And on behalf of everybody, I say thank you to our toll payers and I th thank you to the board. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, the floor is now open for nominations of the Office of Treasurer of the Authority's Governing Board. I'm jump the chair on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss any curve. I got, I got the number on this one. <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez Pena. Second. Thank you. Very good. Are there any further nominations for the Office of Treasurer? Madam Chair, yes. I would like to make a comment. You know, Luis and, and Shelly have been sitting together for a long time. I would like that maybe in the future when they be the chairman and the vice chairman, the director be in the middle. <laughs> yeah, we, we have disagreed. <laughs> Uh, any further nominations? There being no further nominations, I declare the nomination for the treasurer closed. Okay, I get a motion of acclamation. Close. Second. Congratulations, Mr. Rodriguez Pena. Thank you. To uh, the opportunity to continue to do the good work, uh, I'm, I'm new to this board in this new capacity. <laughs> In this new capacity, and I want to be able to continue, and thank you for your faith in me, and I uh, appreciate the, the opportunity. We have two more offices uh, to elect today. Um, election of the board secretary. The office of the board secretary is not required to be held by a board member. Okay, uh, uh, I'd I like to nominate Maria Luisa. She's done an extraordinary job over the years, and no one can do what she can do. Amen to that. <laughs> Second. Third, fourth, fifth. <laughs> wow. Impressive. You got a fourth and a fifth. <laughs> See everybody. We can go down the line and everybody. <laughs> okay. Can I get a motion of acclamation for uh, motion? Party? Okay. Congratulations. The last <laughs> and, and Madam Chair, if I would like to say uh, Maria has amazing patience to reach out to all of us and she does a job always with a smile and always with the utmost courtesy. I can't imagine us being able to run all of these meetings without her absolute professionalism in any way. Everybody gave a speech. Do you want to say something? <laughs> I know you might be later for that, but uh, I just figured I'd take advantage of it. Okay, the last is the assistant secretary. Um, uh, well, we are fortunate to have Maria Luisa is always here keeping things running smoothly in the event of her absence. The, our bylaws provide that the authority should elect at least one assistant secretary. Um, uh, Michael Kiliani has been with the authority for nine years and served as the custodian of her records. He's assigned to the, to the legal unit, he works for myself, where he performs his duties regularly and he assists Maria Luisa in the preparation of the agendas for both the committees and the board meetings. He keeps all records relating to the board. I would like to take the liberty of seeking a nomination from the board for Mr. Kiliani as assistant secretary. Second. Second. Mike, can you just stand up? <laughs> <laughs> I keep him well hidden back there. <laughs> I like that leadership, Mike. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For, for the record, can I get a motion of acclamation? No. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Congratulations, Michael. And that's it for our elections. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Council, for running the show. Um, congratulations to the new executive team. We look forward for your guidance, leadership, and remember, it's all about this community. You got to do it with courage and wisdom, and never forget any one individual. And with that, is there a motion to conclude? Madam Chair, before I conclude, I want to get per personal moment and privilege say thank you 
it really has meant a lot for me and learning under uh, your tenure. It's been a lot and, and I encourage you to continue to be as vocal and as involved as you always have been. So. Remember, thank you very much. Remember, I just said I'm only leaving as a chair. I don't need a title to speak my piece, but I think we're all on the right track. So we're going to good places. With, with yeah, there is no doubt in my mind that Ms. Gutierrez, regardless of her position, will always speak her piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have. Move to adjourn. Move. <laughs>